Welcome to Mount Panorama, Bathurst. This is the duel on the mountain, Hardy's heroes, to decide pole position winner for the great race, the James Hardy 1000 of 1983. Hardy's heroes comprises 10 cars, the 10 fastest qualifiers so far. Well, these are the drivers who've made it for Hardy's heroes, but the big news among those missing are the Mazda RX-7 drivers. There are none of them. No Terry Shield, no Greg Hansford, no Barry Jones, and above all else, there's no Alan Moffat. These fellas behind me reckon that Moffat is foxing, and that in the race, he could still win. Whatever the truth of the matter is, Moffat is not among the top 10 starters. He could do no better than 14th in practice yesterday. The outstanding driver is Bob Morris, who qualified 10th, hadn't driven for 12 months, was given the drive in place of Alan Brown in car four, the rusty French Commodore, and qualified a blistering time to give him 10th place. The best that French could do was 35th, so watch Bobby Morris. Here comes a man who's got him talking at Mount Panorama this year. That's Bobby Morris at the wheel of the John Sands Commodore number four. Surprise, surprise. Taking the green flag and on his timed lap now, Bob Morris. The man who has been out of motor racing for well over a year. He's in the lineup for last year's James Hardy 1000 until co-driver John Fitzpatrick put the Ford into the wall during a late session. Commodore running sweetly. Bobby Morris, a former winner of the Hardy Classic here at Mount Panorama, lining up in a Commodore. Speaks volumes for the man's ability that this is his first drive in a race car for a year. Just step and go out on this most testing of... The left-hander at Murray's corner. The flag is about to go out for Bobby Morris at the end of this lap. How quick will he be? It's not going to get him pole position, Bobby Morris. A 2.21.18. It's terribly fast, but I'm afraid he's going to have to wait another day to carry off the pole position prize. Well, Bob Morris, it's a hard way to make a comeback to motor racing. It certainly is, uh, Evan. I'm still trying to settle into the car, but uh, it's a very good car. And uh, if you can tell it's a recar prepared car there. One of seven Commodores lining up in Hardy's Heroes here at Mount Panorama today. Big reputation Gary Rogers as a hard charger, a man who knows how to drive right on the limit. 38 years of age, Gary Rogers from Melbourne has driven touring cars and of course sports sedans. One of Australia's most accomplished touring car drivers and likes this particular racetrack. Still claims 1981 was the year of disappointment for him. Of course, Gary was involved in that, uh, that huge crash that occurred at the top of Mount Panorama. Running strongly, Gary Rogers, the Soundwave Disco's V8 Commodore. Right back to the inside. pick up the front wheel near the front spoiler just tap the ground there as Rogers works hard through this particular part of the course absolutely fearless this man right at home in big cars with a ton of power under him down through the gears Gary Rogers coming in for the completion of his one lap trial check the flag at the ready and Gary Rogers goes across the clock says 218.64 for Gary Rogers. We'll find out how he feels about that as he speaks with Evan Green. Gary Rogers, 1864, fourth best. Are you happy? Well, Evan, I am happy, yes. Obviously, you always like to do a bit better, but it was a second quicker than our first run. And I think um, had we tried any harder, well, 
it is a race to be run tomorrow and I think we've got to remember that. Young man at the wheel, David Parsons from Tasmania in car number three, the Commodore that he co-drives with Peter Jansen, takes the green flag and goes through on his flying lap in Hardy's Heroes. 23 years of age from Sheffield in Tasmania, David Parsons co-driving with Peter Jansen in the great race tomorrow. A little bit out of shape as he comes through there, now heads up Mountain Straight. You have to be Australia's fastest dairy farmer. Through GTX Ben. Nice line through that corner. And this huge climb to the top of Mount Panorama. Parsons coming up now to the cutting. Good line through there. Brings him out wide though. In good shape though. Tweaks the end just a little bit. As they hit that bump coming out of the corner. And heading up now to the top of the mountain. Most unassuming young man, you'd never pick him as uh, a race car driver, especially not in these big thoroughbreds, because they can be hard to handle around this mountain circuit, but Parsons takes it all in his stride. Well, we went wide that time, brought it back in again. Placed fourth last year with Peter Jansen and the Commodore. In the top ten easily this year. Picking up the front wheel. You hear the spoiler just scrape there. As he brings the Cadbury Schweppes car across the top of Mount Panorama. Oh, out of there, tyres squealing out towards the wall. This is going to be a very fast lap indeed. Time ticking away. Parsons comes round. The flag is out over the finish line for his quick lap in Hardy's Heroes. And here he comes, 218.21 seconds for David Parsons, heading down towards Evan Green. Well, how does a young fella feel to be so far third fastest on the grid? Oh, well, it's a bit of a shock to me, I tell you. Um, still not as quick as yesterday. I feel that uh, there's still more in the car, but I'm a little bit nervous and, and uh, a lot of pressure on me first time to do this sort of thing. Coming in to take the green flag now in the Marlborough dealer team, Commodore number 25 is John Harvey, one of Australia's most experienced drivers. Quite a few of the teams have had problems getting one car into the top ten. But the dealer team, they've got the two, Peter Brock and John Harvey. Harvey, a man often uh, overlooked, tends to stand in the shadow of Peter Brock, but by gee, he is just such an accomplished driver. Last year's James Hardy 1000 Classic made the top 10 last year in qualifying. Doing a good job as he comes up to the cutting. Dab of the brakes went out very wide that time. Very fast line through this corner. Heading up towards Castrol Curve, John Hardy, number 25. Smooth as silk on top of Mount Panorama. John Harvey in the second dealer team car, the Commodore number 25. Very wide that time. Tucks it back in for the next right-hander. This is where Harvey makes time. Just so neat and so smooth. Wheel up there as he comes down the mountain. Knows how to save on the tyre, Bill. Getting ready for that hair-raising run down Conrad Strait. Under the player bridge. Oh, this is going to be quick. Through the last corner, checkered flag at the ready. Uses the wide line out of the corner and he takes the checkered flag. Well, Harvey's time is quick, but will it be quick enough for 218.54? One man who's not out there qualifying, but well should have been there, is Jim Keogh in the Toshiba Commodore. Yesterday, Jim had, well, you tell us what you had, Jim. Well, we had quite a moment, and uh, I guess uh, 175 mile an hour and uh, airborne and uh, uh, across the grass with the acceleration factor, uh, you'd have to say that that was quite an exciting ride, wouldn't you? What happened there? Was it brakes? Well, uh, the little Toshiba car was just going so well, we just recorded 20 dead on our race tyres. And we had a brand new set of qualifiers here, about to bolt on in about two laps. And uh, I was finding my brake mark at the end of the straight, and uh, the little thing got airborne at the 300 mark. And of course, once that happens, you've got no retardation. The green flag, the green car, and the man from Queensland, Dick Johnson, underway.
This is the heavyweight of the race, the Big Falcon. Oh, the Queenslander puts the wheel out as he goes round Hell Corner. Enormous horsepower under the bonnet there. Giant strides up Mountain Straight. Heading up to GTX Bend. Just this at the 351 work. To the right-hander. The climb to the top of Mount Panorama. The Queensland's Dick Johnson goes after pole position. Big new wheels on the Falcon. Sits on the road so much better. A ton of power on the ground. And listen to the cheers of the crowd across the top of the mountain. As one of Australian motorsport's most popular drivers guns the big V8. Everybody's hero, Dick Johnson. Listen to the cheers. Across the top of the mountain in 115.8. If he keeps that up, I hate to think what the final lap time is. Oh, he's hit the fence oh. and he's gone off the track into a tree. Marshals and firemen racing to the scene where Johnson has gone off and either taken our cable or the camera. Took our camera cable, that's why we lost picture there just as he speared off the track. Marshals oh. very quickly on the scene. As we bring you these pictures from There's the Dick Johnson, he's sent a picture now. There he is, taking the helmet off, he's okay. Throws the helmet in disgust after the car. Jill Johnson being comforted in the pit area. She's been watching our monitors. She knows that husband Dick is okay. Dick, I don't know whether there's a hoodoo on you in this mountain. What the devil is it? Well, Gary, I'm not going to give up till we master it again, I can assure you. It's, uh, I don't know, just one of those things. I must have made a slight error. And just clipped the wall coming out and it just pulled the front of the, the, the front wheel off when it got the tyres which were protruding past the wall at the end of the... Uh, the concrete. Oh, we can take a look at a replay of this incident and I mean in hindsight you were just so desperately lucky to get out of this. Well I can't remember that much. All I can remember is the fact that the car was it understeered a little bit towards the wall and the back just touched the wall and uh, it was enough just to pull the car into the tyre. Steering's gone. Yeah, and it just pulled the wheel off and I can remember heading between a couple of trees, and I tell you what, I'm glad I did. There wasn't much room to get through there. Oh, mate, you know, it's like parking in Queen Street, isn't it? <laughs> Alan Grice, and he's got a lot of hard work ahead of him here as the green flag drops on his flying lap. Familiar STP colours, the red and blue. Alan Grice, coming up to BP Cutting. Not only last year's pole winner, but of course the first man to lap round here in excess of 100 miles per hour average. Alan Grice at speed. Oh, using a little bit of the marbles on the outside. And the inside. And the inside. <laughs> hard and this man knows how to push hard down to forest elbow wide open spaces of conrod straight out wide and alan grice is headed down the straight now it's quick but i don't think it'll be as fast as some of the other times here's gricey number six the stp car across the line to take the checkered flag not the quickest but so very creditable in this hastily prepared car a 218.96 for alan grice down through the gears the whispering Nissan turbo george fury at the wheel and taking the green flag on his time lap in hardy's heroes small but fierce this car lightweight in name only 
and a totally different sound of the turbo. Most cars you can hear the engines revving. But the turbo, you can hear the tyres slipping across the ground more than the engine. Kelly in there, very deep indeed. Here comes the turbo. Down through the mountain. And quick, quick, quick at the top. Sensationally quick at the top of the mountain. How good will it be? We're about to find out as he takes the left-hander and the chequered flag goes out for George Fury in the Nissan Bluebird. Time, a sensational 2.17.5 seconds. We'll wait to see whether or not Peter Brock can better that time. Here he comes. Oh, what a sensational view. This is Race View. A new addition to our coverage here at Mount Panorama for 1983. The periscope through the top of the BMW, and boy, what a sensation of speed. A lot of people thought there were going to be maybe two or three masters in the top ten. But the John Player BMW is there, and certainly one of the leading contenders for an outright victory here tomorrow. Time at the top of the mountain is uh, very, very quick. Trying the car. By gee, he is trying so hard. Murray's corner comes up so fast. Take the left hand and the chequered flag is out. For Jim Richards at the end of his flying lap in Hardy's Heroes of the Time about to come to hand. Time coming through for Jim Richards, 2.18.41. Coming up to take the green flag, the fastest man at Mount Panorama this year. Previous best time here in the qualifying leading up to today's Hardy Heroes, 2.15.3. Through the corner, just beautifully. Coming up to GTX Bend. Sharp right hand down on the wheel as he takes the corner. Up the mountain, keep the revs up. Just listen to the spectator reaction as Peter Brock, the king of the mountain, drops down. Working the V8 Commodore hard. It's Heidi line through there, picking up the front wheel. Sensationally quick to the top of the mountain, Peter Brock. Timekeepers hold their breath. They know how fast he's been to the top. Can he keep it up to the bottom? Through the gears. Check a flag at the ready and the king of the mountain, Peter Brock, number 05, going across the line. And the quick to the top of the mountain, Peter the Brock. At an incredible 216, 2.7. What a great time. So it's a slightly depleted list for Hardy's Heroes for 1983. It is, in fact, of the top nine, but number one is still Peter Brock at Mount Panorama, the fastest qualifier, the pole sitter for the great race for 1983. George Fury shares the front row of the grid with Brock. Then we have car number three, the Commodore, with David Parsons at the wheel. The BMW of Jim Richards shares second row of the grid. On the third row, the second dealer team car number 25 with John Harvey. Also Warren Cullen in another Commodore car 22. Car 11, yet one more Commodore, Gary Rogers, alongside Alan Grice in the STP Commodore number 6. And Bob Morris, again in a Commodore, driving car number 4. For the man who outdrove everyone to win the award and to make the presentation to you is the chairman of James Hardy Industries, Mr. John Reed. Well, congratulations, Thank Peter. You, Thank you very much. Wonderful to see you carve another 3.9 seconds off a of record time last year, and we'll see what you can do again tomorrow. Yes, it's going to be, a, without any doubt, the hardest and fastest race I think we've had seen here ever. And uh, I think the time today, over the 16.2, uh, once upon a time we were very concerned about the 100 mile per hour lap. And here we are now, if we don't get below the 100 mile per hour barrier every lap, we think it's a bad one. Everybody's gone to sleep. Yes. Thank you very much. Very good luck for tomorrow. Thank you. I hope you can join us on the Seven Network around Australia at five minutes to eight tomorrow morning for what promises to be another thriller on the mountain. <laughs>